Hello everyone, we would like to talk about equilibrium of rigid body and the free body diagram. So by the end of uh, this set of slides, you will be able to, number one, identify the support reactions, number two, draw free body diagram and find the reactions accordingly. So we are just going to be talking about that in a few slides as we move along this. So before I get started, I just want to quiz you and find out where we stand as far as understanding some concepts. So if a support prevents translation of a body, then the support is exerting what on the body? Number A, couple or moment. Number B, force. Or number C, couple and force. Or number D, none of the above. My answer, if the support prevents translation, then the answer is B. That's going to develop a force. The second question, internal forces are what? Always shown or often shown or rarely shown or never shown on the free body diagram of a whole body. So I believe that internal force are not going to show on the free body diagram of the whole body. It will only show when we make a cut. That is a good start. So let's get to uh, the topic that we are interested in. If you have any arbitrary kind of body right here that's subject to forces, F1, F2, F3, and F4, and so on, and moment one and two and three, how can we say that this is in equilibrium? You have to satisfy that the force, the sum of forces is zero, and the sum of moment at any point, so I would assume at that point O is zero as well. So if the resultant force, which is sum of forces is zero, and the resultant couple or moment is zero, then I can say that this element is in equilibrium or this rigid body is in equilibrium. And that for A and B, all this figures, sum of forces, uh, I sum them up to F sub R and I say equal zero, all the moments I sum them up and say sum of the moment equals zero. How about if I am trying to find out the forces and moment rather at another point? In this case, I would say sum of the moment at point A equals to sum of the moment at point O plus R multiply that by the resultant. Again, if I move to any other point, point A, and try to find out the equations that we are having. In this case, the moment will translate from O to A as a moment. But the forces at point O will be cross multiplied by R to add an extra moment. Both combined, R cross F plus M at O, they should equal to zero in order for us to attain equilibrium. That's something that we uh, discussed. The applications, let me show you some applications. If you see this ramp of a truck that has a certain weight of 400 pounds and that ramp is pinned, otherwise it's just gonna uh, uh, fall. It's pinned right here and it has a cable so it's preventing that from falling. And I ask you, let's say in the test to draw the free body again. Whenever I see a cable like that, I know it's going to be subject to tension. So you cut through it and you show me T. Whenever you see a body that has a certain load or own weight and it has a uniform distribution, you come at the center point G and you drop W right here. So T for cable, W for the weight, and then at the pin support, you are going to develop two unknown reactions. Another example, which is if you have two smooth pipes and they are resting on each other on that ladder, right, or rather that uh, piece of equipment that's right there, and I'm asking you, how can you find out the forces that's exerted from B on A and the forces from A on B and from A to that surface right here? So basically, since this is a point of contact of the surface of the rounded cylinder A, and this is a rigid kind of surface, so I'm going to develop a reaction right here, and I can say it is T. And at that point right here, I develop another reaction, which is F. 
and the weight itself going from the center line all the way down that's the gravitational force that is w that's perfect and for the other elements right here i have w as well pushing down and i have the result in r this is a free body diagram so the right hand side here is a free body diagram that i want you guys to show if i ask you for the free body diagram for the whole structure how about if i ask you for just one element at a time meaning what is the free body for element a only so for element a it's resting on that inclined surface so it has a reaction t which is the effect of the blade here on a and also it's resting on that other blade or the sloped part of the fork right here so it has another reaction f and it has a weight right here so what is that r r is nothing but the effect of this cylinder b on a so this is r so this is a free body diagram for element a how about free body diagram for element b weight reaction at this point called p and the effect of a on b which is r right there all right let's move on to another one we studied before equilibrium for a particle and now we're going to be studying equilibrium for uh, uh rigid body the difference is for a particle we have sum of forces equal zero and they meet at certain point in uh, the rigid body that we're seeing the forces do not have to be concurrent do not have to meet at one point they are creating a moment as well so we have two equations of equilibrium sum of force equal zero and sum of moment equal zero that is for the rigid body however for particle it was only sum of forces equal zero uh, if we are going to be just keep going i explained in the lecture the different types of supports in 2d let's see if you have a roller support that is preventing vertical movement and allowing horizontal so that is vertical reaction if you have a pin support meaning you're preventing horizontal f moment so you have two unknowns fx and fy or you can combine them as resultant reaction force f at a certain angle if you have a fixed support you are preventing horizontal movement vertical movement and rotation that means you're developing horizontal force vertical reaction and moment at the same time so this is very important for you to understand roller pin and fixed support these are the three main things there are others as well if you have a cable like that a cable will produce force f how about if you have a rigid link right here so this reaction here is a link that link i can remove and i put in instead a force f how about if i have this kind of uh, per, uh roller rather support you see these wheels right there so these wheels are perpendicular or the surface of the wheels is resting on that inclined angle so this vertical support is f as well so you can develop force from a cable you can develop force from a link you can develop also one force from a pin support like that in real life you might some have something also called roller bearing which is uh, swinging up and uh, like right and left but is uh, preventing that kind of movement perpendicular to the surface so that again is applying a reaction one unknown reaction perpendicular to the surface and here if you're resting an element on a surface again it's providing some sort of force f here if you are uh, you have a reaction right here and you have a slot right here you are also allowing a vertical reaction so here if you have a rod that's on a sleeve and that sleeve is just moving across this other rod the perpendicular rod right there but it's preventing any kind of movement away from it in that case you are developing one unknown reaction right here so i urge you to look at the book and see the different kinds of supports and these are very important to know what kind of supports are producing only one unknown you see what's common here in all of those it's just one unknown that you are developing uh, versus this kind of pin support is preventing horizontal movement that's two unknowns and uh, again back to this uh, reaction 
uh, we are allowing the rotation, uh, sorry, allowing the movement right here, but preventing any vertical move or not rather vertical it is perpendicular to this axis that's why we develop f and we are preventing movement uh, rotation so we're developing movement again we're only allowing movement across the bar with that sleeve but that sleeve is rigid to that element meaning it's preventing rotation that means it's allowing developing a moment it's preventing movement in that direction so it is providing force f this is different than the one before the one that we had before here it's allowing rotation but this one is not allowing rotation that's why it's developing both vertical reaction or perpendicular reaction and a moment and this is a fixed support as we said earlier that is having f1 f2 and moment m that's in 2D and in real life application, you can see the cables like that, that they are exerting some sort of a force on a bracket. So you see that bracket right here and that bracket is connected with a cable and that cable will provide, if you cut through it, it will provide a tension. The rocker bearing support that you see right here, that's a typical roller support. It has only one unknown right here. This kind of hinge right here is a pin support preventing horizontal and vertical. So you have two unknowns right there. If you have welded connection, that means it's a fixed support. So it's providing three unknowns and so on. And you see some girders that they're resting on that ledger beam. And on that ledge, it's going to have a contact surface. It's going to allow horizontal movements so as preventing only vertical. And that is a vertical reaction. Uh, Again, if you see that shape right here, that means it is preventing vertical or rather perpendicular uh, reaction or movement. That means you're developing force F. I'm repeating this. This is nothing new. A fixed support, three unknowns. Pin support, two unknowns. Roller support, one unknown. That's in 2D. How about in 3D? Same thing. If you have an element that's resting on a surface, it's providing only one unknown. If you have something else, instead of a pin, it's called ball and socket support, meaning preventing horizontal movement in X, in Y, in Z. So that means you develop FX and FY and FZ. Where are the moments? Since this is allowing rotation, then we don't have a moment developed. And that is a bearing, single journal bearing. It will develop these kinds of support reaction, as you can see right here, FX and FZ and moment about X and moment about Z being developed. I like you to familiarize yourself with this kind of support and with the single hinge and what kind of reactions that you can see. This is important for us to understand. For an example here, if you are in the test and I give you that piece of equipment and I just say that you are applying vertical force uh, uh, to the pedal right here, you do have a spring right here what is the force that's developed in this link again you have an applied force here with the leg or the foot of the operator you have a spring right here and you have the key for it and you have a rod right here so in this case uh, if i give you the force in that link as 20 pounds and i give you uh, uh the spring kind of uh, coefficient which is k equals 20 and let's say that i tell you it's stretched 1.5 inches so k times x in that case it will give you uh 20 times one and a half that's 30 pounds so you know now the force in the spring you know now the force in the link and i'm asking how much force we're applying right here so you see this kind of support it's a pin support it has two unknown reactions Take the moment about that point and find the only unknown, and that is force F. Practice doing that, please. Another example here, when you analyze that system right here, we talked about that before, you do have that ramp and you have the cable. So you have the weight of the ramp and the T for the cable. And then at this pin support, you have AX and AY as well. And this is a very simple cantilever that you might see in the test that is fixed in the wall that's developing three unknowns. And you have a vertical force right here. And I'm asking you, knowing the weight of the beam, which is uh, at the center, 
find the unknown reactions. How many equations of equilibrium? Three. Some of force of X, some of forces of Y, some of the moon. These are the stuff that I want you guys to familiarize yourself with and look at this example as well. You have a weight right here at the end, a weight in the middle, and the tension.